of all, I'd like to congratulate you for addressing societal implication of emerging and converging technologies. And Nano certainly is a good illustration of what uh, will happen in the future. Why Nano? Nano is uh, reaching as a... Yes. <coughs> I have a flu, but I will... Um, Nano is reaching as a foundation of uh, matter. What means this? We can change fundamental properties and function through manufacturing. Reaching the foundation of life, the first level of organization of molecules and atoms that lead to a living organism is at the nanoscale. Uh, it's a place where the basic properties and function of macroscopic materials can be changed systematically. Okay. In fact, um, I think that nano is a, a kind of integrator. How is how information technology integrated most of the other disciplines and areas of relevance through communication? I will try, first of all, to give a kind of longer-term view where nanotechnology is going in the international context and to show very briefly what is the role of NNI in this context. First of all, nano is very precisely defined when we started the research program. Uh, that means is a ability the control an ability to restructure matter of the level of atoms and molecules in order to get uh, specific properties and function that are available at this scale. Uh, there are many applications. However, it's only one nanotechnology. This is very important. If you don't have a concept, you cannot develop research programs. You cannot develop uh, even um, policies or implications. Uh, I mention this because many times you hear nanotechnologies, anything that is small. This doesn't make sense, doesn't have a technical content, doesn't have uh, cohesion, doesn't have a research focus, doesn't have a future. Doesn't mean something, just is a buzzword that for the moment we like to use. Uh, if you look now to nanotechnology, we have different products that uh, some are simple, like nanoparticles. Others are more complex, like devices. Others move to larger scale, like systems, and even I will call molecular nanosystem, where the components have a molecular nano size. Uh, that means the art is how to build this from bottom up or from top down, these devices and systems. And it's a timeline for this. Uh, if we look at about 2000, we start to have some systematic control for simple, I will call passive nanostructure like coating, nanoparticle, nanostructure polymers, ceramics. In 2005, we start to move to more targeted drugs or so-called active nanostructure that change their uh, <clears throat> characteristic, their state during their use. Uh, different adaptive structures, amplifier, different transistors. The most productive and the most efficient, most rewarding from research point of view will start probably in a few years when we'll be able to build systems. Systems with revolutionary new products where you assemble from bottom up or from top down different uh, networks or large uh, scale assemblies that have completely different behavior and functions in current products. So far, we don't have this. That means we are in the rudimentary initial phase of development of nano, where we don't have yet measuring devices of biostructure, for instance, with, uh, to measure with atomic precision, a domain of biological or engineering relevance. We do not have yet. We cannot simulate from basic principle a system that means we are just at the beginning. The most rewarding part when the tools will be better developed and uh, concepts for new system will be established will be after 2010. 2015, I think, will be a very uh, uh, good time for research. In longer term, we see nano as converging with other fields uh, like biology, uh, 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 um, information technology, cognitive sciences. Now, 
if we look to this evolving, this field evolving, <clears throat> at this moment, we look to the risk only to the first generation of products. Basically, most of the publications that you see are related to nanoparticle in food, nanoparticle in um, consumer products, very simple nano products, in fact, that are not active, that means do not evolve during their use, and usually are incorporated in a product. Once we move to active nanostructures, for instance, we have to have NEMS on hybrid nano manufacturing or neuro electronic interfaces, things became more complex. And once you go even further, you go for regenerative medicine in brain machine interface, or let's say we create an artificial virus, part uh, bio natural, part artificial. Things are changing. And so in principle, we have to develop the capacity to address implication of these new technologies from now, from now or to think about this. That means to summarize, most of the work now in the world in implication of nano is refers to the first generation nanoparticle dispersion. And this is probably the most, um, the less uh, risky part of nanotechnology in longer term. Uh, if I take examples to give illustration of a generation, we start to have systems. And for instance, we start already to build artificial organs from uh, using nanoscale control. We look to subcellular intervention for treatment of cancer. We look for evolutionary system for biochemical processing. We look for robotics on surfaces. We look for new molecules designed to self-assemble on two, three, four levels to get macroscopic structures. We look to hierarchical self-assembly. That means these products already are an advanced research, and probably you will see products in a few years from now. That means this is a kind of schematic. We move from top down uh, in um, mechanics. We move from bottom up in physics and chemistry. In 2000, we start to address systematically new phenomena and processes at nanoscale. The focus now is on system creation. How we assemble these nano components to create systems of practical use or with new properties that were not available before. And in longer term, I see a bifurcation in different areas of relevance. Uh, already, in fact, we look to these topics, we prepared four volumes looking for this longer term view up to 2030 for converging of nano bio information and cognitive innovations. However, let's go back where we are now. That means in 2000, we made an estimation that by 2015 will be one trillion finite products incorporating nano as a main component. And this prediction still holds at this moment. In this time, however, even in these seven years, the international context changed significantly. For instance, in 2000, 2001, the focus was mainly the excitement that you can connect different disciplines through nano. In 2002, 2003, industry realizes, or up to that moment was sitting aside in most cases, and start to realize that uh, is a condition for competitiveness. And nano basically penetrated all large companies and also uh, disseminated in many other smaller companies. In 2003, 2004, NIH started to have a stronger interest in nano application for medical use and many uh, universities move in this field. And interesting enough, if when NNI started in 2000 was no national program focusing on nano. In 2003, 2004, we have about 60 countries having programs, similar programs. In fact, some programs like in China or Japan, they even organized like NNI in the US. They or created an interagency under the presidential or prime minister office. And um, so it's interesting that 
reason that this happened is that we move nano from the perception that is a field of interest to few scientists looking to small things to a domain that is a foundation of all material world. And if we are able to understand and able to transform that level, we'll have a lot of new results, uh, benefits to society, including sustainable development. In fact, if you look for long term, nano is a best promise for sustainable development. The reason you do is less material, less energy, less water. You do exact manufacturing with less waste. And in order to uh, increase the limits of sustainable development on the earth, basically nano is the best promise at this moment from all. Certainly you have also some secondary effects that so far all the major studies show that secondary effect can be addressed economically. That means the benefits are more important than the time spent or the, uh, for addressing the potential negative effects. And there's no so-called catastrophic event that cannot be recovered so far, identified. So and other thing, interesting, in 2004, 2005, media and NGO enter the field. That means this is different from other fields. In other fields, NGO, in, uh, NGOs were the beginning. In this case, NGOs came late after four or five years of intense development because initially NGOs felt that it's not a big deal. It's not, not be a big development in this field. When they enter, also as a, as a particularity, people who enter initially in NGO and in nano, were no nano, didn't work in nano. Where people from nuclear energy, from bio, from food, uh, uh, and each one came with his own experience. And so only now we start to have an average and scientists are really integrated in the process. Uh, there are several groups, however, very strong that have an important contribution at this moment from NGOs. Another characteristic and uh, at this moment is you start to be a focus more on Earth's resources and nano is seen as a technological, economical and strategic advantage for nations and large businesses. That means there's major change of perception as compared to seven years ago. If you look to the investment made by governments, you see an increase up to 2006 that accelerated after 2006 mainly because of Russia, Iran, um, India and uh, uh, European Union increases that are much larger than the United States at this moment, increases per year. Still, United States has probably, if you survey the best uh, scientists and you ask uh, where the results or you look to indicators, United States has about 25% of investment made by government. However, has more than 50% of highly cited papers, more than 60% of highly of patents, US patent office, and this holds very closely in Japan and Europe, and about more than 70% of seven startup companies. And uh, many uh, major breakthroughs for industry, in fact, happened if you ask Semiconductor Industry Association or other groups, you find happened now in US. Mainly is because in US we organize focus on basic research on discovery, on horizontal in interconnect between different fields and we try to have 10,000 new projects. For instance, we have now NSF alone funds about 4,000 projects per year. In Europe and Japan, they put large part of money to vertical development, like you have an uh, idea and you like in 10 years to be dominant in that field. But something happened because the field changes so fast, their idea that was put in a program is already outdated after five years. And so, you do not have the bed of new ideas and you have uh, no uh, real application. Korea is another extreme. They have all the programs focused on application of this kind. However, they have very good research. It's a specific activity for a country, if you, a smaller country. If you look for per capita, Japan has the largest investment like seven to eight dollars per capita, United States, it's about four to five. You see Korea and Taiwan are larger than the United States. Um, certainly uh, important is uh, the total value too. If you look to investment in industry, something happened in 2007. Industry is investing now more for research and development worldwide than the governments. It's a major change. 
Roughly, the means industry spends more than six billion dollars for research and development, and governments about five billion. If you look to papers, at the blue line on the top is United States. You see a red one, it was Japan that used to be the second country. <clears throat> now China in 2003 exceeded Japan, now is about two times the number of papers, followed by Germany and France. If you look, however, to highly cited paper, I took for simplicity science, nature, and uh, academy. In these three journals in the last years, United States, for instance, has 70% of the papers whose first author from United States. China has 1%. Even in the number of papers, it's about 90% of United States. Uh, the reason is a quality, you need, need time to build up. However, this will, be, will happen uh, probably very soon. If you look uh, for um, patents, again, it's a trend about 15% per year increase. After United States, um, uh, Japan, Germany, and other countries like China, Korea, Taiwan. In United States, as a reflection of the broad interest in many areas, we have a partnership among 25 agencies that covers from energy, to basic research, to food, to defense. And this is a kind of unique program. In fact, I think it's one, uh, the largest uh, collaborative activity in federal government as number of entities involved in the level of interaction. Um, if you look to the budgets, this is a diagram of the increases. Uh, we are now about 1.5 plus, more than $1.5 trillion. Um, what is interesting is that if you look to the topic of interest to this group, we look to investment for um, environmental health and safety. We fund roughly about half of the world investment, or a little bit more at this moment, even if our investment overall in, overall in research is about one quarter. Uh, another illustration of what happened, and I think it's important for this group, is that we created a strong infrastructure in many fields, a very flexible, a flexible and I will call um, comprehensive infrastructure with more than 80 nanotechnology centers 